Welcome back distance learners. So today we're gonna to continue on with lesson 3.1, understanding integers, and we're gonna use our book. So please hit pause and go grab your books and a pencil. Welcome back. So we are back in our book and we're working on 3.1, which is on pages 143 to 147. And by the end of today, you should be really, really good at using positive and negative numbers. So just a quick review of what you learned earlier this week. Integers are basically counting numbers. They're whole numbers, like one, five, nine, or on the negative side, we got negative three, negative five, negative six, any whole numbers. So not one and a half, not 1.2, not negative 5.7, the whole numbers. Today we're gonna to start learning about opposites. So that's our next vocab word, opposite. Now, two numbers are opposite if they are the same distance from zero and are on opposite sides of the number line. So, looking at top, I find my zero. If I look at six, six is six spots away from zero. So, on the other side of zero, I would count six and I would be at negative six. So, six and negative six are opposites. So, um, numbers located on opposite sides of zero and are the same distance would be the definition for opposite. Some characteristics, they are the same digit, like six and six, but one of them needs a negative sign, which is actually our opposite so, so, sign or symbol. So I'm gonna put a minus sign. That tells me that they are opposite. Some examples would be 10, and negative 10. This is not a plus sign. We could have negative four and four, and I'll let you write your own when you get there this afternoon or after my video. Non-examples could be six and negative eight. They are not the same digit. And another non-example would be zero and 10. Definitely not the same digit or we could have just the same digit twice, four and four, and again, one of them would need a negative symbol. Now, look at an actual number line and just talk about it. So, first thing I always do is I find where the zero is, and I look to see that the spaces are the same distance apart. Just a few little tips, as I'm going this way, the numbers are getting bigger and they are all positive to the right of the zero. To the left of the zero, they all have negative symbols. So anything to the left of the zero is gonna be negative. And as I go farther down the line, the number gets bigger, but that just means it's farther away from zero, so actually the amount will be getting smaller. Another little useful tip is rounding. Many of you might not know, we always know that the magic number for rounding is five. So let's say I need around seven. So I'll find the seven, it's way closer to 10 than zero. So I would round up. Let's look at four. Hmm, four is way closer to zero than it is to 10. So that means I would round down to zero. Now I'm sure you're asking or telling yourself, Mr. Creamers, I know you're the smartest teacher in sixth grade. So where am I gonna use this? Well. In real life, if we have a mountain next to water or we have elevations, sea level is always zero. So we would refer to this as zero on a real life number line. And as I go up, as I go up, I'm getting a bigger positive number. And as I'm going down below sea level, we would actually say that this is a negative distance away from zero. And then the seafloor would be even farther down from the sea. Another example, which many of you guys are gonna use this winter because we check out the temperature every day. Here's a real life number line. It's a thermometer. Thermometers, we find zero and anything above it is gonna be positive. Anything below zero, is gonna be negative. So let's all turn to page 148 and do a quick review. On the bottom of page 148 are two connect, connecting problems. 
So I'm gonna do the easy ones first. So I'm looking, I got negative eight, negative 24, 19, and negative 24. Oops, sorry, that's positive 24. The directions say two, draw lines to connect each integer, that's a whole number, with its opposite on the right. And remember, opposite is the same digit with a negative sign. So here is an easy one right away, eight and negative eight. And we have 19 and negative 19. Then I see some 24s and some minus signs and these look a little confused. Well, what's down here? I see two negative signs in a row. Well, two negatives means it's a positive. It means it's a positive. So now I can really figure it out. So I got 24 and negative 24, they're opposites. And then I got negative 24 and 24. So please go ahead, do number 35 on your own. And then we'll check back after you unpause, after you're done. Welcome back. So we, I see a negative five and five are opposites. Both have five, but one of them's got the negative symbol. I see four and negative four, both fours, one of the negative symbol. Two, negative two, both twos, one of the negative symbol. And re remember that both, here I got two negatives, make a positive. So then 13 and negative 13 would be opposite. All right, so now we are all on page 147. Looking at the top, Andrew, get off that desk. So look at Andrew, sit down. Oh, you can't see? My bad. I'll get out of your way. I didn't know I was in front of the board. Okay, so back to where we were. Andrew, my apologies. So quick, let's review what integers. Integers are the county numbers, their opposites, and zero. And today we learned that opposites are integers, those county numbers that are the same distance from zero and on opposite sides of the number line. So remember, we need that and opposite sides of the number line. So there's our number line there. We got a good example that seven and negative seven are opposites. They are the same digit, seven. They are on opposite sides of the number line, or sorry, opposite sides of zero, and they are both the same distance to zero, and that distance would be seven. So let's go do a few problems together. So down below, in one through five, it says use the number line below, write the integer value that each point represents, then write its opposite. So let's look at A, number one, A. Uh, first I find my zero, I realize that A is to the left of zero, so it's gonna be negative, and I would count that it's one, two spots away, so it'd be negative two. And its opposite would be two. Let's find B. B is on the left side, so again, it's gonna be negative, and it is one, two, three, four. So it's gonna be negative four, and negative four's opposite is four. I'll hit pause right now, or actually, you hit pause, sorry, and go ahead and do three, four, five. Okay, C is to the right of zero, so that means it's gonna be positive, and it's one spot away, so it's gonna be one for C and one's opposite would be negative one. D, right side of zero, four spots. So I'm gonna put four and its opposite would be negative four. And E, Andrew, you got E? Thanks for raising your hand, Andrew. Negative six. Okay, negative six, good call. And what's its opposite? Six. Good job, Andrew. Let's go down to number six. Directions say in six through 10, plot each point on the number line below. So L is gonna be at negative eight. So I know negative eight is gonna be on the left side of zero. So I'm gonna go this way for negative. And it is eight, so I'd be three past five. So I find five and go six, seven. Here would be L. Seven. M is three, positive three. So that's to the right of zero, one, two, three. So I'm gonna plot each point. And negative four, so I find zero, and I go to the left, four. Whoops, I put the, I put the negative number down. I should have put N. So hit pause, please, and do nine and 10. Thanks for unpausing.
positive 2 is going to be O. And letter P is going to be negative 1. In 15, or 11 through 15, write the opposite of each integer. So I see negative 12. The opposite would be positive 12. I would get rid of that negative sign. The 63 on 12. To make it opposite of 63, I would go negative 63. Oh, 13, there's that tricky one. Two negatives in a row. Well, I circle my two symbols in a row, and two negatives make a positive. So it really is positive 10, so then the opposite would be negative 10. Please hit pause and do 14 and 15. Thanks for coming back. Opposite of 33. Liv, what'd you get? Negative 33. Thanks, Liv. Good job. And then I see negative 101. So I'm going to get rid of that negative sign. And the opposite of negative 101 would be positive 101. All right, 101. Great job today. So if you have any questions, please rewatch the video, look back in your book, or reach out and ask me what to do on Schoology email or questions for the instructor. Thanks and have a great day.